Sent your messages on every. Yeah. Hope he's okay. I hope he's okay. Where was he staying? He's staying at Michelle's. Where's Michelle? Is Michelle here? He's staying at Michelle's. Let's ask, let's ask, let's ask Michelle. A judge, but we'll go with four judges. It's grand. We don't need five. Huh? 
No, nope. send him messages on every platform. Michelle's trying to phone him. No luck. Who's he coming? What happened to him? We didn't even check through and we thought he was out this morning, so we got through well, to our house. Do you know if he's more than 10 minutes away? Because no, we need to start by. Like, just in Terry Street. And when you were speaking, was he still in the house? Uh, Nevin was actually talking to you. Huh? Nevin was talking to you. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, didn't even think to check, right, we just assumed he wasn't there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's on the way. He just woke up. He's, he's finally going to walk away. So, uh, we're running that door. And we know what to do. We want to explain what to do. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you supplied him with drink, yeah? Yeah, thank you. The last time we trusted you with that. He's on the way anyway. Yeah. Let, let, let the anticipation build. That's pretty, huh? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and for those who are not ladies or gentlemen, good afternoon to you as well. We are an inclusive organisation, we don't care what you call it. We have a very slight delay, we'll just wait on the judge to arrive. And um, while I'm doing, while we're, wait, while we're all waiting, I just want to check that all 12 competitors are in the room. So uh, we have 12 poets today for the title of the All Island Poetry Slam Champion 2022. We are delighted, um, as, as of then, we are delighted to be hosting the event as part of our Winter Warmer Festival. Um, very welcome to all of you. So from Connacht, is Marion Lovett here, please? Could you just stand up for a second, Marion, so that people can see you? Is Margaret from Pine here? And Margaret Quinlan. You have to be common credit for representing the scene as well. No problem. From Ulster, do we have Claire Cormacan? Spider Monkey? Helen Hastings, <laughs> Liam Dong from Mensup, <laughs> also from Mensup, Barry Corbin, <laughs> and completing a trio of men's bands of the Ulster or the Connacht representation, we have Paul Fitzgerald. And from Monster, Jim Crickard. <laughs> Lauren McNamara. <laughs> and finally, Kieran McCarthy. <laughs> Thank you.
Did I get the pronunciation right? <laughs> Kieran's a bit like me, he's got an unusual son, and my son is not, and it's been pronounced all sorts of weird things, and I know how important it is when people get it right to you. So very quickly, just to run you through um, the kind of the way that the day is going to run, just while we wait for the day, we will have the 12, yeah, there's a, can we have a round of applause for Ben Bond? Yeah. I'll give you a brief introduction to the judges if you like one. But the format of the day is this. The, the 12 poets will all perform in the first round, and five judges will score all 12 poets. The top six scores will go through to the second round, so if we have a tie for six and seven, or six, seven, and eight, that number will go through. Each of the poets through to round two will perform again, and that will be written down to three, and that three then will uh, perform one final time, and then we will announce the first, second, and third. There is a three minutes time limit on each performance. When we get to the three minutes, our timekeeper stroke overseer of Judge Pearson Carty from 96 of them will make this sound. <laughs> That's why we test these things. <laughs> So that song will come at three minutes. At that point, each of the poets will come and know your three minutes is up. Finish as soon as you can after that. If you go to four minutes, we will stop the performance. We don't expect that to happen. You've all been here before, so you should be experienced. At the last all I know when you rang the dog once. If you won in 2017, you never rang it at all. Okay, so that's the format of the day. The way we will um, decide the order of performance is Pierce will pull a name from a very expensive coffee jar that we have there. <laughs> we will call the first name, that poll will come and perform. When that poll is finished, we will call the second name, that poll will come and perform, and so on and so forth. So there's a little bit of anxiety involved. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure all 12 poets are a little bit anxious at this stage anyway. Um, but we thought, you know what, we're in Cork, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not anxious when you're in Cork, there's something fucked around with you. So we're going to make damn sure you're anxious, okay? okay. And so we're going to keep on. So, Pierce, if you would call the first name from the hat, please. Just a second, just a second. Just for the performance, there's a glass of water behind you if you want one. Okay, anybody who took a glass of water from that table and is not performing, you're in deep shit when I hand you. We don't even have 12 glasses anymore. Have anyway, give me the first name there. Oh, first please. Uh, Neil O'Neill. Neil O'Neill. Neil O'Neill. Neil O'Neill. Your name is Neil O'Manley, is it? Neil O'Manley. Oh, Neil Spider Monkey. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's been streamed, yeah. We'll release the sound on <laughs> This is a poem celebrating the love of loving as personified free dancing. When music takes over our thinking and our bodies to the talking, we channel ancient teaching for each in love with rhythm. Dancing's wisdom, it's mother nature moving as emotion sowing seasons and with her blessings, we can change the shore scene. Any cool, lonely evening seeping through our being, we can beat them. Oh, we can heat them. We've got infinite strands of breathing, moving in rhythm of their dancing. This is Mother Nature's blessings. 
This is where believing feels our friends be amazing. A fine shine of loving. We're dancing with passions, juggling joy. We're laughing, loving every moment, loving every movement, loving the enjoyment we exist in. This is more nature's wishing. That we go move it with the mission, live life with a passion, express our satisfaction, flex static passions, learn wacky fashions like what's happening. Turn off your plank and bust out a show. Who knows? You could be a follower through the fate of dawn. What's a follower through the fate of dawn? You put a brand new feeling on, heal yourself through song dancing. It's the rise of dawn, characteristics of self. And we're all systems of this wealth. Find consistence on yourself. Find resistance yet rebel with compassion's hardly help. Put down the mental belt. Choose to love your life by spinning kelts, busting raindrops, poking wet upon a body full of sweat, love, pumping at its best. This is feeling on my chest, dancing on honest quest. That's Undress emotion in a depiction of rhythm and relinquish the system of feeling I break and integrate the force of feeling free and its blissful source of dancing. Glee, do it with me. Smile deep, be free, live larger and seize, give, always receive love. That's a rhythm of ease, a magical sacred release to seal the real peace deep. From now until the end, befriended by ascended legends of dancing arrangements, assist this commitment, advance our ascension, and dance different. Judges a moment there to Sati up as Sati, Sati, Tiki, Toy Club as well. Now, the event has started. I forgot to put on my poetry cloak before we started. <laughs> this is a relatively new jacket bought for me by a very good friend. The first night I wore it, I said, This is my poetry coat. It has since been upgraded on the recommendations of other friends to a poetry cloak. So welcome to the poetry cloak. Since my anticipation, five judges with 12 people's lives on their hands. <laughs> Somebody will leave today elevated from unbelievable status. And yet, on the addition of these five people, what a responsibility. <laughs> You want to give me a mark when you're done? <laughs> you're all done? Thank you. So you draw the second name and hand it to me without announcing it in case we have another. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to avoid getting the double figures and fuck ups. I'm at three already. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Hastings. on the steps of the heights that we all thought was empty 
And she looks like someone I know. To be wearing a filthy white wedding dress, Havisham esque nightmare, her hair stuck with cobweb, a chandelier swinging off each ear. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be rats, rats, bringing up their young in the folds of her skirts. <laughs> And then this woman, who looks like someone I know, is going to be a clown in the sky. I've been here the whole time, you shower of bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and the world is going to go so quiet. And the dogs will stop barking, and the kids will stop playing, and for once in their sorry lives, the Joneses will stop on a high to keep up with the stupid fucking Joneses. <laughs> <laughs> The house at the end of my street is empty. Who do I look like? She'll scream. Well, who do I look like? And then to laugh, the kind of laugh that reverberates through our blood, bringing up back the baseline animal with no future and no history. And then she's going to turn and slam the door. And we'll never see her again. But right before she disappears, I realized who she looked like. To that woman, she looked like me. The height at the end of my street is empty. And I hope to God I'm right. Thank you. So while we wait for the judges, uh, Ed, you might give me a nod this time when you're ready to come on. Um, I'm just going to introduce you to the last bookcast from Scotland. Here's our technical. Here's our technical sound today. The most amazing of the songs. If you want to have a problem with those songs, they're matching. Life is way too short to match these songs. Nobody should wear matching socks. <laughs> okay, we're ready to go again. So, contestant number three, Pills, will be. <clears throat> Marion Lovett. Sisters and Charlie has you carry so <laughs> this one's for my mother called Portrait. I forgot to take a picture of my mother as she lay dying. Often in the long, drawn out weeks, I held her hands in mine, who were limp and wrinkled. Blemished with brown spots, nails brittle, fingers gnarled, monotonous swollen like tree nuts. But her touch was just the same as when she twirled the hair of childish me, stroked my cheek, and placed her hands protectively upon my shoulders. The day we stood together with the bishop for the confirmation photo. And the fingertips felt and smelled the same as when she handed me the segment of an orange at breakfast and the juice dripped down. And I licked her fingers then because, as a child, that felt the same as when I licked my own. On her deathbed, the gold band on her ring finger was all worn. And months before, she said, you need soap or Vaseline to get this thing off of me when I am gone. 
in those last days as she lingered I held her hands in mine and the blue veins ran like rivulets down the back of both of them and the skin was paper thin those hands depleted at the end but for so long warm and soft and strong making tending doing those hands held us held together our whole world thank you Regeneration of the well that was, that is, and never ceases, and the crease lift costumes bleed into the firelit night. Such color, such murmuration, as we pause to see, to think, to believe in something that we do not yet know. Harbinger, hiding away in attics to ghost away our downtime. A woman, alive in all her colic. See her now with her teeth on display with enough to feed a famine. Beneath her veil, there is no poverty, shame, or wanton. Through her darkness, or perceived darkness, she has bottles enough to feed, to be, to light. Meanwhile, bones lie idle neath soil, the mark of her, of their toil. No carving or cut out, no stone to darn the date with. The doula, she knows, her mouth is ready to speak, to open the beak of Morrigan, perfectly posed to turn the night inside out despite its henchmen. These weanling pains, wounds that move as quick as bogs. Waves of women whitewash the shore with words, ink no match for blood. Mouths are wide for the eye. Thank you. I think you might give me the nod this time when we're done. Introduce the first of our judges, this is Emma O'Brien. Thank you. 
all the way from Dublin. He describes himself as a working class scumbag. <laughs> He's not really. He is working class and gets stung, but it's not a bad. Ebert is uh, very, very active on the spoken word scene in Dublin, runs a couple of great nights up there. Dublin Slime has been one of them. Check him out on Instagram, Instagram handles. Emmett O'Brien Poetry. Emmett O'Brien Poetry. the accent, they'll definitely find him on Instagram. <laughs> So the next name here is please. Leon Dunn. I could be around town most days, conniving in the sky of the next day, striding along, singing a song, and my chemical and juice haze. I could be around town most days. In the sun, having fun with the best of body, our fingers, and the moon cast out and passed out in this town that doesn't take in strays. I could be around town most days. Sipping from flagons of broken dreams, what could have been, and memories of the far thing seemed to come apart at the seams. I could be around town most days. Sitting broken and smoking alone with nothing but the scars of pain and only a gansey on deck that when the pistons are rain. They find people like me dead on the ground most days. Because to you it might seem strange, a stranger asks for nothing but a bit of change. In this country of broken systems and closed doors and people sleeping out on empty floors. I could be around town most days. In a place where we choose bangers over human beings, a lot of wankers and deem us less than the bottom line. I'll be worrying the over 18, they'll be fine. I'd be around town most days. Where the hospital is so hostile that it's safer to sleep out on the streets as long as we keep away from where the politicians meet. People don't want me around most days. Because you and I know we're all the same, but it's what we're told is the real thing to blame. It's a choice they chose this life to live with, strife to survive by needle or knife. I did you round town most days. We have children in a system systematically spat out sporadically to the world as soon as they come of age. Isolated, isolated, but nothing but their rage towards a world that has let them down. I think that they should be hidden underground in this invisible town. But the have nots have got nowhere to go, and instead their struggles are out there on show. They'd be feeling quite down most days. People forget that this won't go away. And these invisible children are still here to stay until the cycle is fixed. Won't cure itself. And shall continue to exist. So don't sit there and tell me that things are going wrong. Because homeless are people too. That just be the hand. How we turn things around someday. Yeah. So I know where to take you. I'm sorry, this is really my idea. I was joking. John and Sarah. I'm sorry, it's John and Sarah. 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 It's I definitely want to stand up to them. He takes a very large glass of humility every morning before he gets even out of bed. But he's the man behind Ovey, he's the man who wanted to win the Warmer Festival, he's the man who has given uh, space and voices to innumerable poets, both young and old, starting on the journey. And we thank you for your contribution. <laughs> Thank you.
Lauren McNamara. Blank mails. Jimmy was a blank mail, doing what a blank mail does, following and looking and seeing and being and figuring out what he wants and what he needs. His hands are soft. He doesn't want people to know that. He has to do something to prove that he's tough, so he fights, he screams, and he calls his mama a whore, and he feels he needs to do this because he's dad in there to do it no more. He hits his knuckles off the wall, and fuck oh, yeah, they get sore. Then he just does it some more and some more and some more and some more, so then his hands won't be soft. At school, Jimmy sometimes tried, but he didn't really care enough about anything. His teachers told him again and again, you supply yourself, Jim, and you can do anything you want. But Jimmy was a blank man. He hadn't been given a purpose yet, so why should he apply himself to the pursuit of nothingness? Be anything, follow your dreams, but when he woke up, he never remembered any of them. And that made him mad. Maybe he would try. If he had something to try for. But right now, it just wasn't worth it, no matter how good they were at it. One day Jimmy went home and his mom was gone, an empty fridge, an unmade bed, and a lady in a suit, and this is what she said. She said, Jimmy, your mom's having a tough time. She took a break, but it's okay. I've got somewhere for you to stay. And Jimmy replied, fuck you, you don't know my mom and you don't know anything. And then he ran away and he stepped under the bridge for the next three days. But Jimmy was a blank male. He drew his armor and pencil and it quickly got erased by being out of place, by being 14 in the land of people with no ages, children as old as sages, but as young as the magic can get you. But Jimmy was different. His canvas had no interest in their colours. He liked being blank. He could draw any picture he wanted. He hated his bridge. He saw someone jump off it. And that's with his head. He knew he had to leave, so he left. Alone. Somewhat. And he went back home. The handle on the door fell looser. Inside, an empty chair, an empty table, a blank mail, and a blank home. His mother's cigarettes weren't lighting, the TV wasn't playing, no one was screaming, it didn't feel right. Jimmy went to his room. Inside, he met someone new. Charlie used to be a blank mail too. But Charlie doesn't draw a pencil no more. He used the permanent marker. Jimmy was a blank mail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, portraits, only six of six more outstanding performances to go. So, for the way for the scores to come in, the second judge I'll introduce you is Ben Burns, he's here at the bottom. Ben is a previous All Ireland uh, final champion, he uh, won the joint winner in 2017 in Limit. Um, he's originally from Sligo, and say he's represented Connor. Let's see what's going on tomorrow. <laughs> There will be a break at some stage as well, just to get your equipment taken. I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> You're going to have to hold it for another little while. We'll have to break out for Sean and his performance, which will come at the end of the show. Yes, sir. <laughs> Barry Corrigan. Snake and serpent charmer, the jacks who sell the family cow for a bag of magic beans, impounders of spices, exploders of words, testers of fire, and painters of stars. 
the Jews who choose to claim upon rather than you don't have me. Where domestic produce and exotic spices, uncertain virtues, and decided loyalties are displayed while the reticent make speeches. Speeches that highlight the twilight and dazzle the dark, where cats meow or a carnival bark, on a battle track to real men in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the bazaar. Where us all hold regulars, traveling traders, trafficking queer quips and questionable quotes, drop a poem to your tip of yourself and cure the beers and the food and the whiskey and chewed world, patent recipes, snake oil, and for the fuck is the bazaar. Where the rough diamond on sale, form the grit, and may see just one culture pearl among pale case and beads. I trade my prize when open for your piece of beads, please. As we display our dysfunctional children in their Sunday best. <laughs> but we are those jacks who trade the family cow for a bag of magic beans, the Jews who choose to climb upon rather than eat up their beans. We're the nurseries of life and these are strays. Here's the nurseries of wine and these are stray. And we are in debt to the patrons, the sponsors, the impresarios who shelter us homeless with no place to go, to our bewilderness and social isolation, who cultivate the voices and amplify the vocals of fleeing through plenty foreigners and alienated locals and let them address this new United Nation. So, on behalf of these poor, impractical, Oh my God. These syntactic snake and serpent charms. This alliance of rebels and a short of fraud. Who we'll find our times and flaunt our failings and will chain ourselves to our own wailings. I can't put up on my thanks and for your applause. Thank you. <laughs> Classic shoes of Obo, classic shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and assume my lay of food stays forever. Welcome to Cork. Who's, hands up, who's not from Cork? Okay, um, just, well, just keep your hands up a second so we can get you all on CCTV. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm fucking joking? <laughs> Sorry, do you let me you know when you're ready? Okay. Yeah, thank you. You want to know what things to say? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Marguerite Quinlan. <laughs> Habits that inhabit 
inhibit true nature. Dance to a new tune, old story heard as new through open hearted ear. See clear. May bridge a life. So just while we're waiting on the judges' scores, um, I want to say a big, big thank you to each and every one of you who's turned up, not just the competitors, but those of you who turned up to support competitors or just to attend the event, particularly because you parted with some of your hard earned cash to be here. The arts is massively important in this country, in my opinion, it cracks me fucking up at so much of this free. So thank you so much for parting with your money, support the event, and the poets and poetry. Thank you. Speaking of cash, there was cash prizes for the first, second, and third place poll today. Yeah. <laughs> and it's literally cash. <laughs> it's a dying breed. We thought we better give it some life support and actually latch up on the old job. <laughs> Why not? I think we'll have a look to pay them now, right? Yeah. Thomas Fitzgerald. Are y'all up? Her lilt and carry call rises to the ceiling to rouse her peacefully sleeping children on another weekday winter morning and they wake in the still suburban darkness to the smell of toast cooking and their hot breaths puffing like old ghosts in the cold bedroom before them. Are y'all up? She shouts again, then gets the table set for the three separate breakfast. It's warm milk with a bit still for the eldest, rice krispies, toast and tea respectively for kids two and three. She's moving fast. She's thinking about gas and electricity. Her nails are worried daily down past the cubicle, wondering how she's going to pay all these stupid bills. Younger son just started secondary school, shoes to buy, copy books to fill. Middle son needs money for some football trip, but how's she going to fund it though? She never leaves the heat on too long. She collects super clean coupons at baths once a week after Glen Rose. Sure, she barely knows her own husband. They only see each other at night, but this is just modern life. Now she's flicking on the blinding bedroom light. Hey, y'all, up, hurry up, get dressed, you're gonna be late, she. Make sure they eat and have their teeth brushed and rushes them out the gate to beat the morning rush. She gets stuck in traffic, she drops them off. She grabs her trolley, does a weekly shop. She gets home, puts on a wash, keeps one eye on the clock, and then it's back to school to pick them all up. And now the washing has to be hung, then the ironing must be done. There's still that dinner left to cook. She has to finish her housework and then help them with her homework. She's always tired, her bones hurt. She doesn't know her own work like gravity nobody pays her any heed so suddenly they float alone on this cold earth and then they know oh so something's been holding my soul close since birth but our eldest has just gone 16 and he is getting me he wants to go to some disco but she says no so he slams the bedroom door get back out here now she shouts after him and he walks out smiling saying man what are you shouting so much for but he's 30 years older he hands her her newborn baby granddaughter says here she's up he woke her. Yeah. Sorry, but, but you were just, a, there's no time the floor. It needs sweeping up. See, these days she's having trouble keeping up. She grabs the brush. Hey, y'all, look! Sweeps them out the gate to beat the morning rush, and they have heeded her call. Now they barely visit on weekends if they even visit at all, and all she's left with are her own hollow echoes between these creaking walls. Hey, y'all, all, all, calling the ghost of those once young sons who are now all grown up, 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 and gone. And now they're talking about moving her on. 
saying she shouldn't be living in this big house on her own, but don't they know she has diffused herself into every corner of every room in this home. She gave them every grain of her time, held them close while they cried, and she can't lie and say it wasn't a sacrifice, but she would do it all again if they asked her to twice. When she died, they sold the house. They never knew the asking price. Just to be clear, if you do finish for a second of thought and you want to pass by the year, we can still say that. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be very fucking pissed off. <laughs> now, nearest judge to the audience is Sheila Ryder. She's also from Dublin. We, and here in court, we wanted to dispel the myth that we have a problem with Dublin people, so we brought two of them. <laughs> they're both dead sound. In fact, they both should be from court. <laughs> Say that again. If you're gonna have a go at me, do it properly. <laughs> some of these fucking half whispers down the back. Okay. You wanna have a pop? Come on, baby. <laughs> Sheila Wright is also from uh, Dublin, as I said. She's also a poet herself and does amazing work in Belbridge. Yep, Belbridge, with uh, young people introduce them to poetry. What a lovely way to do. I'm not gonna say she earns lots of money, but it's a lovely thing to do. <laughs> does anybody make money from poetry? Somebody. Oh, <laughs> what a shock, nobody lived for that. But there will be three people at the end of today who will be saying, I think I'm not going to be Jim Prickard. Now before I say what I'm about to say, I'll need signatures on these NDAs. I'm trusting you with a disclosure, risking an image I've carefully doctored. My deep dark secret is, I am from Kerry. <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe. I carry a large bag with all of my discarded parts, the Healy Rays, muttering, muttering inside about drink driving and denying climate change. In his own words, sure God will find a way. <laughs> but those brothers know how to whip votes, promising to fix potholes, Harry's form of activism. <laughs> I remember my grandmother getting political after the bacon and cabbage. Do you know the difference between a box of bags and the roads? You'll find terror in the fags. <laughs> As I was saying, I carry a large bag with all of my discarded parts. I fine-tuned my accent to be clean as Newbridge silverware around the neck of Van Doyle. <laughs> Though I on the screen, wielding an accent clean as cut glass, I don't fumble out extra H's or R's, or squish my sentences under a fork. <laughs> Every word is spoken to be heard. <laughs> now and then, whilst having brunch, tracing my finger around the rim of a honey nut nougat fudge craft beer, I'll excuse myself for the toilet. <laughs> Slipping on my Kerrygold lies. <laughs> Flat on my arse, novena of cows, chickens, yeah. eating rays, flying out of the bag. Mud on my glossy shoes, hoof prints all over my sophistication. As I lay splayed in my social faux pas, I begin to think about the wilds of my land. I am a man of the elements, a blessing and a curse, 
A wild-eyed Celtic fairy, Fort Queen, Maid Lane, Slade, Shale, under my left eye, limestone palms, spring water with tears. <laughs> I feel I am beautiful. Monsieur Cartographer, paint me like one of your French bulldogs. <laughs> Fill the quarry into my heart, you will find chasms of loving hairy people. Drill into my belly button, you will find fairy forts, another world in an enclosed space. Cross me or my fairies and we'll bog burst the worst soil creep nightmares all over your <laughs> Now we're introducing our fourth judge, and um, Ed, will you just, Ed, will you just wave your hand so they can see who you are, rather than confusing those who are saying his name again. Ed Oswayo from Limerick, uh, well and truly established poet, third poetry collection coming out next Tuesday. The launch is in Limerick, we'll give you the details later on. You know, you can post them on Instagram, we'll post them on. But uh, we'd like to thank you for being here, Ed, and thank you for your contribution. Does anybody want to go to Limerick next Tuesday night? Actually. Does anybody want to go to Limerick? <laughs> That's a fucking question. But why even win? Well, yeah, we don't mention the whole. Don't be going now. Don't be going now. That's that's Ed's come back to everything for the last time. We're having a little bit of joy. Yeah, you got lucky for it. Any care friends in? <laughs> Yeah, and Paul, you don't really go to the <laughs> Kind of an opposite end of the spectrum. Nice and Dublin footballs in Dublin, so you at the moment. That means there's a job for you. Get on it, kids. I want to come this more. Claire Millennials, unite! Time to face the fixed rate, fixed term realities of your 30s. Those bills won't pay themselves. Their very prospects will play upon your mind while you toss and turn at night trying to fight them into non existence. Roll over, go to sleep. Roll over, go to sleep. It happens to us all. Roll over, go to sleep. I will get there eventually. Eyes wet, haven't slept, but the nightmare keeps pervading. Matchsticks holding my eyes open so that all I can do is only partner or entire Marx, the start of revolution. If I had just a notion or motivation to have a care in this world, form a union, this bits to Edward is push. And double under the pressure, this will matter. Facts crack, can't relax until we decide if we heat up our lives or feed our child, we're at the bottom of this pile. Topped by morons intent, do building back better, led by donkeys. Have they seen this weather? This economic forecast is Florida, so discord amongst the poorest. What kind of leaders would have us ignore this fact? To distract from their inadequacy, don't need prophecy to see where this is going. But maybe there's no sense in apportioning blame. The name just gets changed. The volume of pain unimpacted. Truth's been redacted. Lost all meaning. This pyramid scheme will have me disagree. But the best things in life are free. Or at least they should be. We got it straight from the leader to the old performer. 
I'm going to open this morning with a small few buckets and just lash them and run them on. Bastard dog. Okay, just uh, finally judge uh, Trey's very special announcement here. Trey's is all the way from Northern Ireland. Far more importantly, she's taking time out of her busy schedule, planning her wedding next March to be with us today. <laughs> Can you be a time? No, anybody here think they're good at maths? No, yes, you're not yet very fucking shy the whole time. If you're good at maths, you will know that this is contestant number 12. If you're really, really good, you don't even need to read out the name. Here on Macau. That's what uh, it's called the Bible for that. To think that we won't have for you would be a grave mistake. That we'll suffer all your losses while you take and take and take. That we'll go quietly into the night as you inject stress into our days. Attempt to shade a piercing light and manipulate our ways. To your idle threats and schemes consider us unfazed. That your ideals could corrupt us, that our third eye would blaze. That you could project manage our best instincts into only what pays. And we won't see you scamper out the back door through your smoke screen haze. Natural like a plant work sucking water from its roots, you steal from us our concepts and sell us back your truths. Where honour has no traction and logic no use and our feet aching, walking round in other people's shoes, marching after mysteries and paying tax on clues. The rope style to make a noose produced many a lit fuse between a bad deal and no deal. You ask us to choose and simulate success or you consistently lose. Just know that time isn't linear. You who rule the loose now when morality is currency, we'll be fatted cows. And you'll come crawling to us begging for who's and what's and how's. I hope to give you the time of day that our patience allows. That we maintain the peace of a second slap cheek that you make 95 from stacks of nine to five weeks. But I can promise nothing, and for you I cannot speak. Just know that choices made in freedom from prosperity's peak will be remembered when you're desperate and cited when you're weak. When revenge receives occasion and with the grace not to take, and your pain needs no persuasion, maybe then you will awake to see that we could work together for our mutual sake. But if you go any further up, we can only go down. And for all your time spent seeing straight, you have failed to look around. To see beneath your high fence borders, there lies common ground. May you engage with your humanity and humility be found. And give thanks that this land is above water, because otherwise you'd drown. Okay, we're at the end of the first round. There's a, a bit of a process now for the judges. They, they complete their scoring, and the last competitor they hand their score sheets to Pierce McCarthy. He puts it into the judge's spreadsheet. that does the math. Some bits of scoring for math. He's, <laughs> he's a radio broadcaster. Doesn't have to write anything up, really. You know what I mean? Um, so we're going to ask them to leave the room when they're doing that as well. So they can have a little bit of peace and quiet. We'll be down here 
in a Western scenario of sentence. Watch your hands from fucking men to the book. Fucking good, are we going to fucking touch you? Oh, well, it's again somebody who carries that stuff and all the ex knows what they're saying. <laughs> You might let me know when you're ready. Uh, I was just wondering through what's going to happen while while they're out doing judging and have a performance on show the league. I think she was the current reigning All Ireland Sand Court champion. She's been the All Ireland Court champion since 2019. <laughs> <laughs> that really sounds amazing. Because a lot of good things came out of the pandemic, but Sean had been All Ireland champion for three fucking years. <laughs> That's actually on her website. <laughs> It's not, she's not that, uh, she doesn't get that excited. Bring the trophy with you when you come up as well, Shauna. But we get to that in a second. So, after Shauna's performance, then we are going to take a break. You can go and uh, have a wee wee, or whatever you call that in other parts of the country, I don't know. What's the kind of term for wee wee? Somebody's telling us. We're just going to say piss, aren't you? No, we won't go there. So, you can go ahead, you might want to get yourself a drink from the, shop, the cafe outside, you might get a drop of water from here. Like me, you might want to. Um, Shorten your lifespan by taking some nicotine into your chest <laughs> for the 20th time today. Are you ready to go there? Yeah. So, um, we're going to do this like it's 12 o'clock at a wedding. They're going to make it, they're going to make a tunnel and pierce from the wall on the That's not going to happen. Ed, Ed's just given me the filthiest look ever. Ed's just looked at you as a cork actually beat limerick in the last hour. I was going to last the clock completely. So, is it just you going up there to the fight? Give me a round of applause on the way out. And can I just say, don't come back to me if you've written pretty shit on any of the fucking, um, I was pissed at. No, ladies and gentlemen, I was there when she won the All Ireland Final in 2019 in Dublin. I was there when she won the Monster Society the same year. You're in for a treat. Massive round of applause. <laughs> To the All Ireland Sam Hawkins champion, that is Sean O'Neill. I just wanted a chance to look like I wanted. I can find it, thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Um, as Stan said, I won in 2019, so I was the winner for 2020 and onwards. And uh, <laughs> after winning the competition, I got to perform in places that I never even imagined I'd be performing in, like my kitchen, and my sitting room, and my bathroom, and so I think. Um, but it was some weird times, right? And, um, Lots of people got into baking, so they kept it and um, so they go on and on. Um, I, like lots of other people, got really into anxiety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I a lot of my time. But I did find some things that kind of helped with that, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this poem. And it's called PMA, which means Positive Mental Attitude. <laughs> I tried to have a PMA, but I just said PMS. The platitude of gratitude seemed a bit far-fetched. Wrecked, exhausted, nihilistic and melancholic. I couldn't escape the panic. So, half mad and half desperate, I opted into the sacred. And to my amazement, it wasn't long before I felt an improvement. Felt like a mad old flower talking to a higher power and a cuckoo queen asking angels to intervene. But I mean, we've circled around these themes for eons. So I deem, maybe there is something else going on, more than meets the eye. Not a bearded guy up in the sky, but something more universal, like an acknowledging the spirit in one another. Look to the person next to you. <laughs> They were once just an embryo too. Now they're a full-grown person with assertions, aspirations. That in itself is absolutely mental. So why are we so quick to disregard the transcendental? Oh no, not I. Oh no, not I. Not this chick. Now I say, ooh, sexy psychics. I'll give you all my money, bring my aura, do my tarot cards, and I'll come out buzzing. All you may say, say what you want. Charlatans, who gives a fuck? If it makes me feel better, I'll give them all my tenors. 
This divination got me feeling so centered and connected. I donned my jade, garnet, and agate. So many crystals, they'll see me from space. <laughs> I trigger men all over the place. Talk of magic till we're blue in the face. Divinating salt baths, Tibetan gold, essential oils, get my zone. Feel my chakras, get in the line. Ooh, yeah, the tippy light is sure damn fine. So, shaman me up, baby. Activate my Kundalini, vibrate at a real high frequency. Yogi poses got me feeling alive. Prana on my mind. Energy healers are the new drug dealers, so get in line. <laughs> Maybe I am in denial. It's fine for me to say, just change your perspective. A person of relative privilege, as if it's that easy. Not to propose you forgo medication and therapy to go among trees and pray to goddesses, but it is my hypothesis that the existential dread can't get you down with your real zen out with your head in the clouds, so why the heck not? <laughs> Hack that matrix to get your kicks, tweak beliefs for more mystique. Meditate to the metaphysical to quit being so cynical using all the tools at your disposal. But it's hard. Oh, so what harm a few charms and spells helps with the spell of pessimism? We're on the cusp of a major pinnacle, for better or worse, so if the woo-woo works it up to the fuck, it sure beats me <laughs> fed up. And if there's solace to be found in believing there's a purpose, then so be it. Now I'm not saying I'm completely cured, I still have days I'm pure allergic, but I feel like I can cope. And I've started to note all the things I'm grateful for writing them down in a journal. The eventual goal is to rip through a hole in the multiverse and stop equating work to self-worth, but for now, I just say thank you. And you know what? I mean it too. Church and during the pause of the Irish cycle for so long, and uh, instilling us all an awful lot of guilt and shame and uh, self hate and all that jazz. Um, but I think as you get old, you kind of find spirituality in different ways. And one of the ways I find uh, a sense of spirituality or God, let's say, is in uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> Because the message of self-acceptance and you know being kind to one another, I think you can find that in, in that show. And there's one drag queen in particular called Moni Kerch who was a contestant on it, and she was really holy and obedient to the Bible, and she was always talking about scripture. And I was like, Jesus, if she was given mass, I'd be there every day. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what this message is about. Hear ye, hear ye. After a catastrophic history of conflict and sanctimony, we've decided it's time to give something else a try. A new proposal we instate for all priests to be replaced by flamboyant, poetic drag queens. <laughs> Sanctioned Sunday Mass at Disco, a DJ at each altar, a monastery of mirror balls, communion of joy and laughter. Fine attire must be done, be ready to twirl for the gods. All that condemnation to hell got quite exhausting, so we've decided to try a more celebratory approach of love and compassion. <laughs> that was, of course, our initial aim, but of it we've made a haze. It's high time for a change, to spice up our lives, as those girls would say. We'll keep the wine, encouraged to be kind, throw a party in the pulpit. Fill the pews with those for whom an apology is long overdue for any humiliation we may have caused. We'll keep the rainbow windows, camp up the iconography, switch Adam and Eve with the snake to Brittany at the BMA. <laughs> <laughs> Exchange Mary Magdalene for Madonna. Like a prayer and I'm in slavery will be sung wildly by the choir. <laughs> we'll applaud divas, Jezebels, whores, Thank those who came before, for no one here would cast stones. We'd be out here living our best lives. Hashtag mass goals. 
<laughs> and the ceremony begins this performer in heels tall as a pro Patrick will open her mouth with sassiness and teach kindness on her tongue. We'll pray the patron saints, RuPaul and Penny Bliss, all the Stonewall kids, those wrongly persecuted, and those who dared to vote. The world is early enough without being told we're full of sin. We've come to this realization. So we've decided to let that sit. First time. The church will now be fun and inclusive of everyone. It's been in the closet for far too long. <laughs> <laughs> Gown to stop all the moping around. We hope fringe culture inspired glamour can save us from our sorrow. We heard you regret and shame we endorsed and forced you to internalize. So now go forth and wrap yourself in life, give yourself that ooh ah ah, and let's make the world gay again. <laughs> I was to like a bit of variety in other topics of discourse. 
It helps all the songs by Link Ford. <laughs> but I recognize the nuance and respect the candor. So screw it, just hit play. Let's see it once again. <laughs>
no particular order. <laughs> Anybody? I can't remember what it is. Anybody can know particular order? Yes. No, it's none of that. The fuck is showing? I have never watched it. What is it? Yeah. No, University Challenge is the one. That's, that's high bro enough for me to have watched the Sunday in my life. I probably had to um, exit after two minutes because I was definitely lost. So we have six people going through to round two in no particular order. There they are. Jim Cricker. Helen Hayson. <laughs> Palmer Fitzgerald. <laughs> Kieran McCarthy. <laughs> Leon Dunn. And Margaret Woodford. <laughs> Congratulations to the six of you. You'll be back to perform again after break. Right? When I was at the 2019 final, Paul Williams, who was the did you win champion that yeah. time? DMC, and he had this lovely phrase. And this has gone out to the six people who haven't managed to go through to the second round. This is a this is an insane process. Um, and what Bo said was, you're here to compete against each other, but you're here to compete with each other. So, can I have another round of applause for the six people who are not going to The good news is we're taking a break. The even better news it's a 10 minute break. The bad news, don't anybody fucking move just yet. <laughs> this is the important part. The bad news is it's 10 minutes, but it's not 10 minutes Irish fucking time. Okay? We will be able to give you a shout to come back in about 8 in the time. Thank you so much. And see you around here. Thank <laughs> you. 
People online are looking at that now. Smiles <laughs> like. Something new. Yeah. <laughs> It is, yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. All around the poetry films as well. Much yeah, like the poetry. Great. Why do you want to take them away? 
just want to make sure I can hear you. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome. Glad you could make it. I was trying to get back. I sent me. We sat now, sent down the back. I was trying to get into the south. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You found your way anyway. In with a crack. all those windows for the last 10 minutes, but this one doesn't open. Okay, okay. Yeah, so a little bit, a little crack, it's not open anymore. Sorry. Can hear you, lovely. Grand, lovely, tasty. Mm, thank you. All right.
Okay, folks, we're going to try and get going again. So, you guys ready? So I just want to um, check that we have all six contestants for round two in the room. Is Jim Fricka here? Yeah. Leon John. Yeah. Tom yeah. Mr. Yeah. 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 Just before we go on, I want to say a big thank you to Helen Hastings. Uh, she has uh, allowed me to complete my promise for a front row seat for Mary O'Connor. That was the first talk of the day. For those of you who have been here, um, thank you, Helen. So let me be clear, I will not be having a word with the judges on Helen's behalf and the director of finance. It's completely irrelevant to the story. The second thing is cheers, Barry C. Not in life. <laughs> Well, we, never mind where it's fucking done. Never mind where it's fucking done. And if you get up from court and you're thinking not, then think of non barry C, you'll be very careful. There's a disease out there called non barry C, I guess it's fucking crippling. Get your act together. Don't see. I know. Yeah. 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 That's my daughter. The only person in the room to fucking have a go at me and get away with it. Touch his leg. I only gave thought to him. But that's fine. <laughs> okay, pop up number five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who said that? Not your daughter. Achieve number six. Achieve number six. You tell me if I received was a pop up. Can we get security there, please? <laughs> security there, please. Get this uh, fucking man over here with me. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Let's look So, we're going to do the same thing for round two as we did uh, for round one, which is that Pierce will draw the name of the contestant. The contestants will then perform and take a little bit of a beat. I'll talk some bullshit. Be, um, you might have noticed that. The judges, uh, if you haven't, you've been asleep. Um, the judges will do the tally second contest and so on and so on and get to the end of the, the six performers. Judges will leave the room, do what they need to do. Sean will be entertaining incredibly well for another 10 minutes. Is that okay? Has anybody got any objections to that routine? That's good to know. Now we can proceed with the ceremony. So first, if you would pull the first name from the very expensive coffee cup. And while he's doing that, I let uh, Jane back into the room. There's always one leg for him. <laughs> and it's always James. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. 
First up is Margaret Collins. This is a piece called Solstice, and I would recommend that uh, you come and view it in Sligo because it's magnificent. Solstice. A lathering of light oozing through a creviced sky, conjecture and conjuncture, one way, lightning fast but as gentle as a child's whisper. During this disease in a year that has seemed perpetually black, yet the bud still grew, the bird still flew and landed somehow they knew. The galactic center smiles a universe away. Here, time to stop. Like supping caps at trough, we beaver through just about enough to realize what we miss. A hug, a breath, a kiss. Like anime lulling to the suck of the city. These stars are peeping out merry light for you, for me. Thank you. We can all deny that Paul Hill last night on the Winter War and the Festival and we've spoken about the fact that it doesn't really matter where you come from. I tend to agree with that. But for the subsequent begging letter to the Arts Council, um, for funding for next year, we will be pointing out that we had six men and six women in the first round. <laughs> Three representatives from each of the um, provinces. And in this, this round, we have four men and two women. Didn't quite hit the mail on there. But we have a representative from every province. And I think that's great to know. Leon Dunn. I'm arguing with an older gentleman recently. A discourse of two opposing opinions, I try my best to be amicably civil. There was one thing that seemed to deem this conversation through as the fact he was a traditional L. Diddle. Not that he was sentimental in the old days, more in a mental sense of homophobic ways, that he had a fear of gays, and others that he seemed to deem different. This fear of queer, or that else me. A challenge to the balance of power that was held quite dear to the likes of him. For you see, this man is the epitome of the hetero norm that would him nothing is concrete, even gender is performative, but he, uh, he disagreed. <laughs> At about this time, the barmaid turned around to face our hypothetical battleground. She said, The mind is sort of love, they're all ignorant pricks. Should I be going around calling people bundles of sticks? He didn't like that. <laughs> Instead, he declared that anyone who cared that he was part of a bygone era. But, it's <laughs> 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 about time we repaired the damage that had snared for too long the Amandiles of air. No longer is it illegal to be different to be condemned by a church or a ghost of aim and devil air. And some signs of progress. A blossoming message to youth of society should send them, should look at the landslide victory, the marriage referendum. Feeling fairly optimistic. And it's about time this gentleman got a grip on reality, saw his vision of equality was a bit more realistic. And there's differences between us, me and him, him and me, but if you looked at his both similarities, you might see white, working class, male, straight. When his sword bars the door, our sword helps to open that gate. Because we're all part of a new Ireland. One with a bit more fluidity, a country with a little less fucking negativity towards those brave enough to challenge the norm. Because these are all beautiful. 
I shouldn't have to conform. Thank you. Why is the blue celebrating our birthday today? I'm not going to tell you how young she is, and I'm not going to ask her to sing happy birthday. But I am going to ask her another round of applause. And it's you. Happy birthday, Ross. If anybody else is celebrating something the audience you like to mention, do what Ross did and just tell somebody else to let it sound. You don't have to be forward and come up and say I want some attention. You don't have to be that. It's just you know the way we all use friends like that. It's absolutely wonderful. You let it up, let's walk them up. Jim Crickard. So this poem is called Straight Pride, and um, I don't know if you heard about this, but in Boston, 2019, they actually approved the Straight Pride Parade. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of like, what's that going to look like? Straight Pride. Every shade of beige will be draped around Boston. <laughs> Don't stop believing in summer of 69, glaring from floats. Grown men dressed in Buzz Lightyear costumes. Straight women may leave their gay best friends in a playpen. All the colors of the rainbow blended into a terrible brown. <laughs> And they'll wave that great brown flag around and shout their message aggressively. We're here, not queer. Get used to us. <laughs> We're used to you. <laughs> Vanilla ice cream. TED Talks on the missionary position. <laughs> Female impersonators impersonated by females. <laughs> Outdoor screenings of the Titanic, goat yoga, avocado toast, every movie starring Tom Cruise, <laughs> and khaki pants. LGBT activists will get accused of being Westboro Baptists for picketing the Gatsby Pride parody with signs that read, when was it illegal for men and women to get married? When did a straight person get jailed for being straight? When did a straight person get put to death for being straight? Oh, my poor repressed majority. <laughs> How have you coped these last 10 years? Are you mad because we've taken rainbows away from my little pony? <laughs> Pretty shit and Sean and Lily out. Economy. So this time they will say, that was really shit. <laughs> so far. But the best is yet to come. You never do. You never do. Are you ready to go, lads? Yeah. You should get a little school teacher more than Kieran McCarthy. It's called a note or two. A note or two for those of you thinking that the boom is back. 
Patrick streets of patchwork quilts with all the people sleeping rough and batting. Even still, there are those hanging tough on crack, hustling this and that, hoping this will pass. You're doing them in the back, those who keep your wallets fat and your plastic tap, but then don't react when there's questions asked. Would you get by on half of that so they've the room to swing a cat? Trade your duvet for the heavy sack, hey, your fancy that, your fancy little rat. I'll peep your gas and keep it tapped while you have your cheeks intact. Fuck your figures, keep your facts until you have your timbers stacked and get to building social gaps. Maintain the social, claim your tax from these faceless corporate hacks and if not, you can expect a rap. Well, and by your shameless acts, digging on their behalf while your own fall through the cracks. You should hand your passports back, you sit in the chair of seven sat. You stay the right side of the tracks. Or you don't get your power back when your silver spoons and napkins wrapped at a table set for three while Mary Mother McCree and her whole family are out wandering the street. Scrounging to eat while her four green fields, heritage and culture are packaged in a square deal, sold cynically to vultures. Caught up on a taut reel and reefed out of the water as she goes to score a spare meal so she might feed her daughter the blatance of your raw greed sends lambs to the slaughter, calling father, please. Nah, daddy's gone and he's not coming back for you. Killers in cream chino slacks claiming this man died of a heart attack. Nah, he died because he had no gaff. His heart was just the first to say, fuck that and fuck you. Thinking we'll stand back as you grease the palms of Uncle Pat and get your cousin Jack a brand new hat with a BAM sticker at the back. Protection from tech office glass while council flats lie in rubble stacks and deceased line the welcome mats. <laughs> I would like to say that um, the selection of judges wasn't entirely random. Yeah. Um, they think it was. It wasn't. <laughs> so what we what we have tried to do this year, as we did in 2019, is to represent uh, the entire country. So Ben Barnes is actually representing Connacht. He's originally from Sligo. Ed Dwyer from Limerick is representing Munster. Trays is representing Northern Ireland. And then, as I said, we bought two jobs because you know we couldn't be fucking pissing them off. So Emily and Sheila are representing Leinster. I'd like you to give them a round of applause to the top You guys can just sit down and watch all of them. Helen Hastings. Her word will be vomited, spewed, ricocheted, sent forth. Don't be the poet. Because this will be a moment that your heart will stop beating for the same thing in the same way. The way you breathe will change. The way you mow your lawn, brush your hair, hold your cup. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you advance on the territory of yet another lover. Don't feed the poet. She will write about you. You have stopped this planet. Hung up on the one singular reflection in the mirror. Singular reflection. Singular reflection. Singular perception. Singular perspective. Singular introspection. And then you said for a little bit accidentally creating the feast, and now the, the great, the mighty singular had exploded and shattered into a million different pieces, and now the faces 
of everyone that you have ever met and your entire existence etched into your own. And your eyes are now the poet's eyes that shine from the sockets in your head. Don't be the poet. She will buy the word you. And one day soon you will be in a shopping queue and the customer behind you will be the poet and the customer in front of you will be the poet and the board checkout assistant will be the poet the whole world is filled with the poet and to distract yourself you will take up the first thing off the conveyor belt which may or may not be a bag of couscous. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap cellophane will rattle, rattle under your fingers, annoy a sudden life flood from this existential error. This new distortion, this distortion of you, you need the back. The word blur and refocus, blur and refocus. This is like being drunk without drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably you stock, store in food dry place, rather nice with prawns, and don't feed the poet, she'll write about you. <laughs> Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment now um, to acknowledge the work of a whole load of people that contributed to the festival, not just today, the festival is running since last Thursday with some workshops and energy performances, poetry from a whole load of them. And while Paul Casey is the main man in Ove, there are a whole load of people who give up their time freely to ensure that the festival runs not just smoothly and professionally, but it's fun. Um, and without those um, people, the festival wouldn't happen. So I'd just like to acknowledge their contribution over the weekend as well. Thank you very much. Cormac <laughs> Fitzgerald. On the peeling green bench by the pond at the back of the park, old John sits long after dark with a four pack of cans he bought from the corner shop. He sparks a fire, takes a dry, cracks the first one, blows the froth off the top, takes a slow, then gets lost in caustic thoughts, watching the ducks crisscross the inky water, thinking about all those he has loved and fucked over. See, John was a wild one when he was young, rarely sober. Always running from himself, but going nowhere. Always trying to get higher as he sank ever lower. He played the wild rover, drank and drank till time won slower. But I could just get a trip and quickly ran. Now he's already draining his third can. And he's thinking about all the pain and hurt he caused his poor man till every time he went home. No matter how badly he had fucked up. No matter what he had said or done or stole, she would hold her dead feet, some clothes, give him a bed to sleep in, food to eat, some fresh clothes, call his dad, and both would drop him straight to the closest private rehab. And in the back of the car, he'd watch the knuckles of his dad's hands going white, gripping the steering wheel, and he would swear to him and to himself that this time was for real, that this time he would get me. And you know what? He would. <laughs> And in six months' time, he'd be out feeling oh so dry and oh so good and practically foaming at the mouth. And as soon as he could, he would hit the nearest pub for another round of beer or stout and around and around, disappear in those drinks like water, disappears in a drought. Oh, Johnny boy, what are you thinking about? Your man's long dead, Johnny, your dad chucked you out, but that was only the start. If only they knew that drink to you was like blood into a beating heart and how you took to it like those ducks there took to that water. What are you thinking about, Johnny? As the last can clatters empty to the ground and he reaches inside his jacket pocket, pulls the amber nagging and out twists the top off and proceeds to slug the whole burning lock down to ward away the growing shroud surrounding him now the drinking buddies of days long gone and around and around from the depths of the pond their once bloodshot eyes gone bright and pale white like the moon singing their old songs saying give us an else look at you telling them they'll be seeing them soon 
and melting away then as quickly as they came as the medicine that is the sickness starts to take hold and John is back on that park bench all alone where he can calmly face the ghost of his own life and know that long ago some demons slit his body open sucked out what he was meant to be and replaced it with something sick and broken and will never give it back and he stumbles off home alone leaving behind a mess of crumpled cans and shattered glass that lie there in the moonlight like dead bodies by the bench where John sat. So we've reached the end of round two. The judges and uh, peers. I'm not sure what choice we've given here, it's probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we didn't give him one because he asked one and he told him, fuck off. <laughs> you know, when you give them a title, when you get pretentious, it's like, get over it. You know what I mean? Uh, so that means that at the end of round two, you know that guys have the same opportunity as, as you had at the end of round one. That's called the Paul's Morton, where you discuss who you think should have gone through and who was brilliant and who, you know, kind of touched it. Um, and that's, you know, part of the competition. The bad news for you is, it doesn't matter what you fucking think. <laughs> then you guys make a decision. But on a serious note, and I said this to all the judges before we started, I've said this on multiple occasions about Slam. Slam is an amazing thing. Aidan Murphy, you run the used to run Slam Sunday as well, and he always said to me, the competition is just to get them in the door. That's what it's about, just to get them in the door. It's not really about being better than somebody else, it's about giving yourself an opportunity to express yourself and what you feel about the world to other people and allow other people to take something from that. I'm 100 percent sure that everybody in this room has experienced that multiple times today. So we thank you all again for your performance. So I'm not making it to appear to the old judges to fuck off over the room and make a decision so we can get on with the competition. And what can reach three people with money? Come on, lads. Okay, then we'll just say the stats are back there. Come on, come on, man. Yeah. And while they're doing that, you are in for a second treat, a second helping of Shauna Lee Lynch, the current reigning All Ireland Slam Poetry Champion. Come on, Peter Charles. shopkeeper, barista, teacher, basically just a drifter, but those jobs are just what I do sometimes. They are not how I identify. I'll need to buy more time before giving a reply. Sorry, uh, what was the question? <laughs> they repeat it. They are relentless. Like a bloodhound sniffing a bone, we'll get proposed for artists to search their deepest wells, then ask themselves in the middle of the night, must I write? If the answer is a resounding yes, then you are a true artist, and you must take that destiny and bear it, its burden and its greatness, without ever asking what recompense might come from outside. So yes, in the eyes of Raina Maria Rilke, and in my personal opinion, I am a writer. <laughs> I'm 
shout for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> too loud and too bold, I can tell by their tone they are skeptical. I bet they think, think I'm delusional or entitled, that I should do something more worthwhile, not spend an inordinate amount of time rhyming and googling synonyms when I could be out rescuing <laughs> children or something. You're probably right. Not even that productive. Not like all those other more writery writers who are obviously much, much better, smarter, more charismatic, more attractive. Wait, how is that important? I don't know, but I'm starting to panic. I just want to go home. Why must we boast and list our achievements? It's rude and narcissistic. In fact, it's twisted. No, it's sick. It's. This person is only making conversation. They don't know your frustration. That because art is seen as frivolous to some, you've got a dose of imposter syndrome mixed with distress about how we assess success, but all of that's a lot to address in a few seconds of small chat. Relax, stop projecting, and answer the goddamn question. <laughs> I. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> I am to get it. 
Um, so that's my last poem for uh, now. Factor still has an audience. Bring back the magic, the spells, the tarot, the worship of nature and the fear of Earth's karma. Dead dancing darkness, shadow marionettes of mysterious beings, Gaia wicked energy, black air feminists, ink and mummy princesses, no Elysian sleek ideals here, pal. No sorry. You can't buy a cauldron in Ikea, and a reusable coffee cup alone won't solve global warming. Here's a shot of that old sorcery, raw, visceral alchemy, October moon voodoo, conjuring out contouring spirits into life. Tread werewolves and vampires, not deposits for first time buyers, prophesize fair distribution of profits. Send the corporate to the incorporeal, afflict all the influences, resurrect the necromancers to raise up dark mambo divas on a Friday night, fling bodies and forfeits, poltergeists. The unexplainable underworld pinch teenagers glued to their bones, shake them up and rattle their bones, and tell them stop snapchatting each other from across the same room. <laughs> it's boring. Whip out the Ouija board and see who's trending. No, no, click, click, scroll, scroll, eye of newt and tongue of toad, invoke she devils, blue hair of bitches, the snow white witches, not self righteous hippies talking shite. Grocery store <laughs> incense and not a black cat in sight. Give me maynights, banshees, talismans, fairies, patience in belief, people still aren't recycling. New Orleans jazz, saxophones, telekinetic temporal folds, psychics contacting the spirit world, nights spent supernatural, not scrolling through Instagram like a sugar junkie's candy rush, dashing tinfoil fashion sites, all the rituals to protect the earth from us destroying it. I have insomnia in the witching hour. I light candles for pagan power. I need a belief in something higher than me, a connection not charged by USB. I'll drum and dance, offer a vegan sacrifice, scatter Santeria stones on my Scandinavian wooden floor, and say a prayer for when the tide comes in. <laughs> Thanks to John. Sorry, this half the last uh, piece, which I love, as you know, um, but there was students and colleagues kind of stuff, and I was like, actually, about six feet local, um, and I had to make a decision. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a result just before we do it, and we have one more massive round of applause for Sean and Ian You know, when you, when you go to poetry events, there's lots of people talk about how you support artists. Um, I mean, again, it's not just poetry in this country, but like, if you do music and artistry all over the place. And I hear people saying, you know, one of the ways you can support artists is to follow them online on Instagram or Facebook. Sean, you know, he's not that active on there. I am on Instagram. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's your Instagram handle? Sean Lee 11. Sean Lee 11. <laughs> so give her a shout out. But for me, there's different ways of supporting artists. Yes, the follow on Instagram and Facebook is lovely. They're all kind of addicted to the numbers again. Yeah. What about giving them a gift? What about buying a book? So if you are involved in running a festival or any kind of show anywhere around the country, or you know somebody who's involved in a festival, and if you're creative in Moscow, please mention the names of the artists that you've seen here today, because they are all fucking amazing. And we support artists by giving them beats and paying them for the beats, if at all possible. So, um, <laughs> judges are uh, encouraged.
encouraged to use decimal points at all stages during this competition. I have not made an error at the top of the score sheet. So use decimal points because invariably the standard is so high that if you're giving them wrong numbers or even point five, you end up with lots of sides. But even when you're using decimal points, you end up with four people going through to the final round rather than three. So so side is the score. So in no particular order, <laughs> Helen Hayes. <laughs> Fitzgerald. <laughs> Jim Pridgard. <Pritchard. laughs> Leon Dunn. First up in the final round is Jim Crickard. I was born May 6, 1992. Homosexuality was legalized in 1993. I guess that means I was an illegal baby. <laughs> you know what they say about gays. Always needing an entrance. <laughs> the laws changed, but people didn't. By the time I reached 12, I knew well how to behave. I studied the hand movements of men, like steady ships tied down by their hips. And when they sat, I watched them sail into the bay of their lap. Whereas mine were pink Barbie boats <laughs> that zipped around in conversation, gesticulating. As I sat with my hands clasped on my lap, they became a bone china basin held by rubber wrists, and then I turned them into ships. Each morning in the bathroom, the boy machine, the black bathroom mat, a conveyor belt, carried me along a line of lynx cans, spraying gas from their steel eyes. Combs, liquid dax wax moved over and back, over and back, until I emerged, glossy, Packaged, believable. I befriended some boys, the soccer kind, said I supported Arsenal to survive. <laughs> when really, I was watching Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Bree, Lynette, Susan, Gabrielle, and the other one. <laughs> My glass of apple juice was a white wine. As I sat, reclined, my legs crossed thigh over thigh, imagining myself in the sickest white pantsuit. But I'd deny my love for that show three times before the cock crowed. <laughs> Their approval was my heir. When I turned 16, I felt the word fabulous on my tongue. That sparkling, ridiculous word tasted like a cherry cocktail that I splashed around in conversation, announcing who I was. I flew a flag and hilarious girls encircled me protectively, their little gay president. <laughs> we laughed so hard together, moving as one, wall to wall in the school halls, an untouchable circle. Thank you.
Colin Fitzgerald. This night is done. Race, pass, run. Mates fucked off two places far flung, but Jake is stuck staring down at a white line like he missed the pistol shot of the starting gun. Boom. The lad's jacks is packed. Full up with young jacked up dumb sons. It's all shaved heads and man buns, flashing all the cash that they've got to give on water bags of gummy coke mixed with baby laxative. Jakey can't afford a gap from which to live. Nah, so instead he waits ages, then snorts up those paid wages just so he can ride the wave of a vaguely elevated state of mind. So he can talk shy, act like things are all right, while all night eyeballs are all whites, blinded by the lights like mics as any tiny, mild euphoric type, feeling even kinda happy or fine, sadly dies with his dwindling supply in each scabby white line. And then it's back to the club where Jake feels numb, yeah, numb, but not very young. Nah, see, because Jakey's reaching 31. Well, the rest of the crowd, where they barely even seem to have their leaving search done. He keeps trying to chat up young ones, but they keep running away from him. But really, he should be the one running out of that place, yes. See, because Jake consistently says his life's a sad mess. He persistently fails to pass milestone tests. He's got many, many miles to go before he rests. Like I said, he can't afford a place of his own to lay his head. And so he just sleeps alone in his old childhood bed. He needs to go home, but just keep hoovering up that bad blow and blowing the last of his dough on eight euro points of shite innocence instead. And then it's re, re, rewind all the way back to some scholarly gap for this sad night story. And JP is out of his head, feeling shy, shortness of breath. A while ago, he snorted up a line of cat, laid him out like a racehorse under the lights at the vet. <laughs> Worse than it is pal, yeah, nice one. And Jake's night really should be done. But see, Jake, he always has to have just too much fun. He always has to stay past the last song that comes on as the gap is winding down. And all the one shiny new cans are just grimy used ashtrays now. And all that's left are your best mates to pass that last slip around and collectively pass out wrapped in coats letting soft heads to rest on the cold hard ground but jake man it's time to go home there's no mates here to be found jake snaps awake and it's 10 years later he's in the bottom bunk bed buried beneath his old pokemon duvet blue and red his mates have all grown up got new jobs and mortgages while the weight of his age weighs him down heavy as useless lead he's wondering where you has fled as in the locker next to his stupid head he spies the crumbly white remains of another last night, turns away, shuts his eyes and sighs, wondering not for the first or indeed the last time. Is he ever, ever going to get past that starting role? Helen Hastings. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not the border control. I am merely a human being standing at the foot of a territory in which you have never been. Allow me to introduce myself. I I'm not your border control. Take off your shoes. We go barefoot here. There are no storms to barb you, no sharp stones to cut you, just a soft grind that rises right.
rider riders who cut the soft, tender, aching feet. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not your board of control. I will not cut you down, hug and rip at your clothes, searching for the weapon that we and you both know that we don't have. I will, however, ask to take a hand on your chest and feel the world that beats within you. Feel the millions of your chaoses all woven together, suddenly a sparkling, duly laden spider web of your history. Allow me to introduce myself. I am not your border of control. I will not ask for your passport. The laminated proof of your existence, laminated proof of your genesis, I will, however, ask that you display your truth. Your truth is the blanket that your mother wrapped you in when you were newborn, when you were nothing but a blinking rapture, a soft, thin covered promise of hope. We marvel at this blanket's softness and the lullaby it sings silently. There's a storm on the horizon. This storm is your history. I usher you across the boundary. Hot on your heels, snapping at your throat. I tell you to follow the map within, follow the compass, the compass that spins like a kaleidoscope at your core. You disappear seconds before the storm arrives. It rears up at my boundary. I hear your name being called from somewhere deep, somewhere dark within its climate. It sounds like barbed wire being trailed over something soft. Allow me to introduce myself, I say, because I'm your fucking border control. Thank you. We are done. Let's talk about masculinity, about this male inability to recognize and identify. The underlying fragility when understanding what it is to be a man. From the get-go, we are swept up in this narrative, this grand scheme, this plan. An amalgamation of information derived from the etiquette of life don't be fucking crying. Don't be getting the notions to show emotions, except maybe angry and knowing you're pissed and fist to be flying, cause real men no words are for boards, and boards they'll be lying. <laughs> and we're taught these rules from the very beginning. Especially in schools where the kids do be grinning to each other. Though anyone that doesn't seem to fit in, you know the types. The heat sweeps and weirdos, yeah, they're a bit different, but they're much easier to cheer though, takes the heat off me, basically. And those that don't fit the guidelines are placed on the sidelines, outcast, outcast, the corner post of normality. And this is done with the utmost formality, sorry. Not bad, I don't She don't even follow the box. And a few years pass and it's still the same game, this rejection sticks to the very zip to your brain for the rest of your teenage life. Puts through your confidence like a hot fucking night ball because you didn't play along. Didn't pretend like the others to be no macho and strong, no. Like art. Music and skating, therefore you're picked on and given a few babies because you deserve it, you little pig, you little sap, you smelly little hippie and he hits another slap. 
That's a different. That's a unique. Because they're challenging the norms and they perceive this as weak. Is that wrong? Yeah, that's wrong. And school doesn't last forever in life after it's very long compared to that show. When every day feels like a struggle and a struggle or a fight where you sit. Some lads become dads and these boys become men. If they have kids of their own and God forbid it happens to them, hopefully their boys are open to be a part of the team. That's the dream. Fitting in is really easy or so it would seem when you keep the head down. It's like either rule, book, or bullshit. With any luck, they'll avoid getting stuck in that cesspool and negativity, the hegemonic, demonic, brotherhood, of toxic masculinity. Because there's more to life than playing by hypothetical rules, and those who enforce these laws are just a bunch of shy bags and fools too afraid to be themselves. Like a flock of sheep, they must keep and step with their hair, but if their man has ever questioned, you can see that they're scared because they're not you. You can be kind and be gentle and be true. But more than you do. Five judges and peers are going to head over to the hallway and somehow, somehow come back and give us um, a running order of one, two, three, and four. The announcement will be made as follows I announce the third place um, and give them that cash prize, and then I will announce the winner. Um, because the winner needs to get a huge cheer. But then we will, not, we, will, um, we will give the presentation to second place before we do the presentation to Trophy Sean. Would you mind handing over the trophy? Uh, not right now, we don't even know when we get to it. When we get to it. Is that okay? Uh, are you ready to go? Yeah. Go on then. Got a PhD in shit. <laughs> okay, so I am now going to um, ask the all the coaches to call today to actually call the name come to the top of the room just so they can take a bow and get a really massive one last massive round of applause. It has been an amazing evening, like the 10 three or four years, it is never a disappointment. Each and every one of you has contributed enormously to it. So can I have Marion Lowe? Thank you. 
Growing up in the promised land, they had reasons to meet from small things, big things one day come. This land of hopes and dreams, they dream, they dream. Magic seeds fire with every wish and wish, and I hoped to be my American city. My book of dreams, I would be the one who born from across the border to the King's Highway. The chosen, unsatisfied heart to find all that heaven and love to bring the rising of one love to American land. Now my book of dreams and glory days the world is upon. Phantoms of the ghost, the past dreams drop out the light of day, and a dead man in a slow fade on the edge of the world, and I wish I was blind to life itself. And life itself, out of work, 57 channels and nothing on, and all that I'm thinking about is the battle of the self, loathing pistol, boom, 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 out on the street, another shattered and gone, no way man fades away under empty skies, counting on a miracle of be. Hey, Chetman, easy money factory. He's one step up from the innocent brothers under the bridge's high hopes of gone, gone, gone. Further on up the road, a mansion on the hill is living proof that it's all or nothing at all. There's the man at the top, the local hero. And the word of the prodigal son, you can look, but you better not touch. I ain't looking after number one. Determination is the price you pay for better days. Surprise, surprise. This life, this land, is two hearts, two faces. The broken hearted and the promised like paradise. A roll of the dice, you're a fortunate son. A roll of the dice, you're out on the street. A roll of the dice, you're a lucky man in a lucky town. A roll of the dice, you're missing. And no one knows. A roll of the dice, that's what you get in the promised land. So I turn, turn, turn. It was deep down in the vault, the soul drive with eyes on the prize, is always working on a dream, yes, deep down in the vault, chimes of freedom, pick me up, point the way to paradise, say, come on, son, get up, this land is your land, this land is your land, this land is your land, and I'll stand for you all day. And it was on a Monday night in Oberg. I had a really long day, busy day, but we pegged into Oberg. Landed just before they started. I did that land in Rock, and my name came up first in Rock. For fuck's sake. Three lines in, gone completely. Poem fucking vanished from my head. So, kind of nice that I got through it. So, I'm going to do. Hey! He was just gave me a face like this. Yes. <laughs> I apologise, I lost track of myself, but I wanted to announce third, second, and then third, so I'm going to walk for it. <laughs> and I could see some places there. Yeah. And then my head was going, what the fuck is wrong with them? There's just fucking nothing wrong with them, there's something fucking wrong with them. The judges love blessing the points. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the scores. That's not. Um, that's never done. We never give you the scores. We just announce. Uh, in third place, in the All Ireland Slam Poetry Final of 2022, is June Pritchard. <laughs> Thank you. 
Go dungeon. Fifty quid in the envelope there, too. But drinks are on you. In second place in the All Island Poetry Slam final for 2022 is Helen Hayes. Tell you the scores, or I'm going to tell you that there's just over 0.5 the third place from Cricket and the winner. And we're seeking the cash prize 150 euros. <laughs> Receiving this amazing trophy from the uh, current All Ireland champion, Shauna, Sh Shauna Lee Lynch, is Leon Dunn. <laughs> And again, third, second, first place. Thank you so much. One more round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, at the Women Poet, there's one more poem before we leave. You can do one of the poems you've already done here, or you can do a new one entirely up to yourself. But before we do that, I want to get a, a huge round of applause for our five judges of Pearson County. It is a moral task, as I just before, but we are all in the society, and it is crazy stuff. So it's so hard to, to do it. And if we took five groups of five and asked them to score today, we might well have got five different results. But it's, it, the standard has been off the scale. Uh, and I want to thank you for your time and attention because it takes a bit of concentration to take a bit right away from it. One final thing I said earlier on give, give, give artists a pay gig. The winner, Leon Don, has a pay gig at Electric Picnic last year, or next year, courtesy of Dave Payne. But we're going to leave you with the words and the voice of the 2002 All Island Poetry Slam Champion. <laughs> 22, sorry. <laughs> I'm just back from electric picnic, obviously. It is Leon Dunn! Um, I started the audience to start gigging um, only this year, and uh, I fell in love with it. I met a lot of amazing people through this entire thing. I got addicted, addicted to it. And the best part of that it wasn't just about performing, but I got to meet all these incredibly talented people. Um, there were a lot of them in this room. And I got to meet, you know, I hope to continue to meet the more talented people at the church. I feel like I won't miss the universe or something. It sounds <laughs> <laughs> like I was shaking my hands, I don't know what to do. I'm just shaking my hands. I wrote this poem uh, only recently, um, and it's a tribute to all the people that I've met all over the world. Artists and performers, every single one. To speak to a few beforehand, share a light smile, a friendly nod, or a simple shake of the hand. With the quiet ones, the letters. The local legends and forest climbers, musicians, singers, and the occasional sounds of violence. <laughs> Each one's different, 
that all share a similar theme, capturing life's experiences and molding them into the creative stream of conscious effort. If we were all caterpillars, then performance spaces like these in a cocoon, a place where you can build your craft and confidence until they're ready to fall out of the wound, rest and ready for battle. You see, creative minds are blind without their art. It helps make sense in a profound, chaotic world around them. Whether it be through a song, a poem, a joke, or a dancer, book, play, a pen, you just have to take that chance. Leap and the net shall appear, they said. Just as long as you're doing your thing in your own wonderful, unique way. And regardless of chosen modality, we all share this commonality, a compulsion to create a piece of infinity within our own mortality. That's a moment like butterfly. And then moment into something beautiful before your very eyes, the metamorphosize into something great. And this drive of ours comes from somewhere deep. In that place where you forget to eat, even sometimes fall go sleep. In the very core of your being, the fibers of your essence, each a lesson of individuality, a statement that I am here, that I exist, and I will turn my joy, hardship, and pain into a temporary moment of creative bliss. His power truly lies in this. Pulling something from the ego, from the head to the page, and the next step then is to take to that stage where you shall rage, rage, and rage. I hope you could just write and recite a little poem or something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah.